Hello, my name is Amy Brakeman. I'm really excited as a Tonic member to get to speak to other Tonic members about my approach to being a catalytic investor. I have an, a relevant background for being a catalytic investor because I've worked in different sectors of the economy. I started out in the corporate sector. I went to Harvard Business School. I was a McKinsey consultant to large corporations. And then I spent 15 years working in the nonprofit sector in Africa helping youth develop economic opportunities and dignity through both nonprofits and public-private partnerships. So when I started investing four years ago, I brought both of those um, experiences to bear. I spend more of my time thinking about what would we create if we could start fresh knowing what we know now, and rather than you know looking at the existing capitalist system and trying to nudge it along. So let me give you a few examples of the kind of opportunities I've discovered. Um, I got introduced to an investment firm called Impact Engine that was founded by two exceptional women. One is a woman of color. And I've discovered um, through working with them and other first-time fund managers that I really love investing in emerging managers to help build non-traditional human talent. And you may be aware why this would be considered catalytic is that mainstream investment advisors and even impact advisors will tell you, oh, we don't recommend that you invest in new firms and we can't recommend anyone who hasn't managed assets of more than $50 million. And whatever you do, avoid first closes because those are very risky. And I sort of feel the opposite about that. Um, so that's a way I see it's a very important piece of my portfolio and the action that, that I've taken over the last couple of years is taking reasonable risks to help de-risk first-time funds so that fund managers can build a track record and then other investors will feel more confident about stepping into future rounds. And that is already happening. Um, sometimes I won't even invest in the next round because um, they've already been able to attract additional capital from um, more market-based investors. Another theme that is really key to me, which is shared ownership models, um, how we can treat workforces better and businesses can get better results also. Uh, I just want to remind a few people a few facts um, about American workforces. And I'm sorry for those of you who are listening who are from other countries, but that uh, the, this data relates to the U.S., uh, back in 2019, a Federal Reserve study was released that said 40% of Americans would not have enough savings or credit to secure $400 if they had an emergency. When I think about the purpose of my capital, I don't like living in an economic system with those terrible outcomes. So I work toward um, investing in shared ownership models, um, cooperatives, other kinds of business models that are trying to engage workforces, um, help them accrue retirement savings. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a little bit more about the mechanics of how I do this. That explains a little bit about how I think about the purpose of my capital and the kinds of things I'm doing with it. But I do have three impact advisors, actually. And I cultivate strong networks with peers, including those in Tonic. And... Um, that helps me have a very large pipeline and then a lot of educational opportunities about non-traditional ways about deploying capital. I basically have um, two, two different sources and slightly different due diligence processes for my deal, deals. Um, one of my advisors is more of a mainstream impact investment advisor and they handle um, most of the administration of all of my investing. Um, and then the other two investors are more specialized, I would say more impact first investors. So their pipeline, they're really giving me impact first deals. They've done due diligence on them. And usually I would approve those deals. So there's the advisor led sourcing and due diligence. And then there is the my own sourced pipeline through the various networks I'm in. And those, in most cases, I'm relying on my networks, peers, and my own judgment to make those decisions. Occasionally, I will have um, I will have one of my advisors take a look too. And my asset allocation started out being very traditional. I was when I was relying most on my advisors. They would, you know, 
want me to be in a long-term growth portfolio that was primarily in uh, public equities and public debt. And over time, as I find my own thesis and my own opportunities to shift my capital, I am moving more into private debt and equity funds and even direct investments where I can have higher impact. I think about returns and different pockets of my portfolio. I basically have different purposes for, and different return and impact goals for different pockets of my portfolio. I have an individual trust, which is really for my living expenses that we expect that I will need over my hopefully long and glorious life. And that is invested in, it's less impact invested. It is invested in cash, my real estate, and fixed income. While it is ESG aligned, I would say it is not um, you know, high impact. Um, and that allows, because we've done that and separated that out, and that's a fraction of my assets, that leaves the rest of the capital to be oriented more around long-term and impact rather than returns. So the other pockets of assets I have are an IRA, and that really is, is um, uh, really invested impact first because I uh, because I've insulated the capital for my living expenses, I don't expect to need that. I also have a foundation, which is um, also impact invested. And then my DAF, um, I do have a donor advised fund, and that is where I do the most catalytic investments, um, not only because that is it is purposeful capital or social impact, but also um, because sometimes my custodian of my IRA will not approve some of the more catalytic investments, um, some of the debt investments or things that might be uh, less traditional um, to their approval process. And I will step back up to a meta level for a minute. Part of why I am a catalytic investor rather than a market rate investor is the more I get connected to the communities and the individuals who have really been left behind by our economic system, I become more aware of how the consequences of our economic system that really prioritize shareholder value and investment investor returns has had some really dire consequences. And we're, we're seeing that in so many ways. I won't make this um, conversation around that. But I don't want to, I don't actually want to earn market returns because to me, market returns are based on an extractive system where we're taking resources from the planet that are limited and we're not paying for them. And then a market rate, you know, a traditional market rate is also based on the exploitation of labor, um, you know, through slavery historically, and then other legacies that have been carried forward that mean we get into these situations that I mentioned already that people don't even have $400 um, if they have an emergency. So for me, there isn't really much of a choice other than to be a catalytic investor. Um, so in closing, I would say that um, it's really exciting to keep opening your mind to what you can do with your capital, how it will, your capital will continue to grow. Mine is, um, you will make a difference and you can have a really meaningful and fun life. So I think you're already doing that or you're on that path because you're listening to this video. So I just tell you, keep going, trust your judgment, keep finding peers who are working on the same issues that you are or have the same mindset, feel free to reach out to me uh, to me within Tonic, Amy Brakeman. And I thank you so much for listening to, to my views.